Hi there guys, welcome to this coverage of White Dwarf 457. So I don't normally cover White Dwarf, but I've had a flick through here and a good read in the magazine today, and it's really top notch. So I thought, is as it's that good, I'll go through, I'll mention my highlights, but I will go through the entire magazine. And if this is popular, I'll make it a monthly feature. So we'll start with the contents page. Um, so we start with all the normal letters and stuff. We've got Black Library, The Terminus. We've got Worlds of Warhammer article. Then we've got Age of Sigmar. We've got the Time Celestial Trog Herds of the Realms. Then an army showcase of Glog's Mega Mob. And then we've got Rules of Engagement. Then we've got a bit about Golden Demon, the Monster Slayer. Then we're on to a new feature for 40k, 40, 000, Warhammer 40,000 Flashpoints. So we've got our Govan campaign, the background and the rules. And then we've got Crescent Rise. Blagelind horrors, chittering metal creatures and a difficult demolition mission in this short story. Then we're sticking with 40k for Galactic War Zones, Forge Worlds and Echoes from the Warp. And then we're talking about army lists here. Then we're on to Underworlds. So we're talking about Glory Points uh, and Arena Mortis. Then we're at The Beast Within. And it's talking about Daughters of Ken comes face to face with a dangerous foe. Then we're sticking with Underworlds. We've got Path to Victory. So it's, a tactic, so it's a tactics guide for the two latest Beastgrave warbands. And then we've got Scenes of Battle. So we've got Gareth Edrington talking to about taking pictures of his minis. Then we've got the highlight for this month, for me at least, Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress, Men of Metal. So this is a new quest which concerns the latest expansion that came out, Ascension. Then we're on to Middle Earth, the Paylock Cometh, a whole heap of tactics for Azog the Defiler. Then we're into Necromunda, where they're talking about open play campaigns. Back to 40k, Faith and Fire Part 7. And then we're on to Outside the Studio, talk about the models they've painted and that kind of thing. Okay, so we're going to skip over the letters and that kind of stuff, the fan art. Uh, there is some nice stuff in this issue, so if you're going to pick it up, it is well worth it. There's actually some cool stuff here, which appears to be some terrain that is made out of old sprues, which is nice. Lovely paint job. So model of the month is Arcan the Black. It's a fantastic job there. Okay, so first section we've got Black Library, the Terminus. Local myth has it that a mysterious train runs on moonless nights, taking people to untold treasures. But are the myths true on what awaits the Terminus? A Warhammer story by David Annandale. Um, it's pretty good, it's fairly light. I'm not sure if this is kind of a precursor to a wider story in the Black Library range. Uh, I don't think it is, I think it's just a, a small contained uh, story here but he's nonetheless pretty good worth a read next one to worlds of warhammer where there's an interview with jordan green now jordan green is a background writer for age of sigmar and he's talking mostly about humor in age of sigmar so the kind of dark humor and the specific way they write about humor for warhammer now, obviously age of sigmar is quite a serious subject for a lot of people so they have to be quite intricate in the way that they weave any humor into the stories this article goes through how they do that and the certain tropes that they need to be aware of when trying to do it. Now we're looking at Trogoths and the like. So we're going to look at the Tome Celestial. Don't look under that bridge. there be Trogoths there. And then we've got the Monster Slayer. Slayer Sword 2019 winner Maxine Penode joins us to talk about the miniatures painting on page 44. So this is just a pretty broad, broad article about Trogos in general. And it is quite detailed. Ages of Unthinking Destruction. So this is just a brief history of Trogos and where they come from. So Age of Myths, through the Age of Chaos and into the Age of Sigmar. So... In terms of battle time stuff, we've got Glog's Mega Mob Allegiance abilities. <clears throat> so abilities are monstrous regeneration with a command ability of oblivious to sorcery, a command trait of Glog's Mega Mob, as well as Shepherd of Idiotic Destruction, then Artifacts of Power, Ether Quartz Studded Hide. They've got a War Scroll update for Bad Moon Loon Shrine. 
If your general has the Chogoth keyword, any friendly bad moon loon shrines replace their Moonclaw Lairs ability with the hidden Trogoth's ability. So at the end of each of your turns, you can choose one friendly Fellwater Trogoth or Rock Gut Trogoth unit that has been destroyed. If you do so, roll a four up a new replacement unit with half the models from the unit that was destroyed. Rounding up is added to your army. Okay, then we've got War Scroll Battalion, so we've got Stomping Mega Mob. 160 points. That includes one Dankhold Trog Boss, and between three and nine Dankhold Trogoffs, Fellwater Trogoffs, or Rock Gut Trogoffs, and between zero and two Ale Guzzlub Gargants. They've got, the, they've got a one-track mind ability there as well. So fairly fleshed out. Okay, so then we've got an army showcase, which is pretty cool. Okay, then we're on to rules of engagement. So Jervis Johnson focuses on the creation, design, and evolution of the rules for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Jervis wants to make a few interesting points about points. So it's basically got a points calculator for war scroll characteristics. It's got a blank one now. Then it's got a separate one for war scroll abilities. And then it tells you how to generate your allegiance ability ones as well. Okay, then we're into a Golden Demon interview, the Monster Slayer. Golden Demon is the most prestigious Warhammer painting competition in the world, with countless painters from across the globe taking part. Here we chat to Slayer Sword winner Maxime Pernod about his love. Maxime Pernod about his love of painting and his winning entry from Golden Demon 20, 2019. So it's got a bit about his latest works. Um, the first Slayer Sword. That's a mutated forest giant. Okay, so here is his... 2019 winner. This looks pretty special. Very special, actually. Okay, then he's got some work in progress stuff. So this is just generally how he goes about his painting process and that kind of thing. Quite interesting. Got some tips there as well. Okay, now, now we're into 40K. So this features the first part in a three-part series with new campaign rules and background for the ongoing war around the Pariah Nexus. Okay, the Argovan campaign. The galaxy is being torn asunder. New war zones exploding into life with ever increasing frequency. In this inaugural Flashpoint article, we present new background rules and fiction for one such engagement, the Argovan campaign. So, it's got Arvagan's system. Okay, so what are flashpoints? So this is a new feature for 40K. So we assume that this is gonna come up every month or at least on a regular basis. So what are flashpoints? They're collections of articles that explore the particular region of war, or war zone at a specific point in time. Flashpoints contain new rules for you to try out on the battlefield, plus new stories and background about the setting, giving you plenty of opportunities to theme your games. You could recreate some of the battles mentioned in the background section, convert characters based on the heroes in the stories, or build new battlefield, or build a new battlefield to represent one of the theatres of war. Flashpoints span multiple issues, and articles are always marked with the flashpoint symbol, which is this, making them easy to find in your copy of White Dwarf. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Something new. So it gives us quite a heavy background of the Argovon system. Forces of the Argovon campaign. So they're really heavy on the narrative here. Okay, so it's got the actual campaign here. As the Necrons awaken from their hibernation, the Argovon system is plunged into all-out war. But the Necrons are not only alien are not the only alien race making a bid to claim the valuable system. Read on to find out how you can fight this epic campaign set in the Prior Nexus. Okay, so the campaign rules are set out here. And anyone who owns this book will be fairly familiar with in terms of how things are laid out. So we've got uh, forming alliances, how you do that, different ways to play in the campaign length. 
We've got the war zone points and winning the campaign. So theatres of war, we've got Argovon Fault Zone with their own individual rules and details. The Saronic Lakes with the same. We've got weather effects here, and treacherous traits. There's tectonic effect um, on Argovon Fault Zone. We've got History of Mountain Valley, which has got frozen blizzards. And then we've got campaign agendas, scavengers, defensive bulwark, sacred realm, the nightly rivalry, forbidden xenotech, flee the sinking ship and loose ends. So blimey, that's that's quite a lot actually. So the whole Argovon campaign, sixty to sixty nine. So. 10 pages, that's cool. And then we've got, with their armoured support in tatters, a squad of Tempestus Scions is tasked with the destruction of a seemingly unprotected Necron gun emplacement. But not all is as it seems in this short story by Callum Davis. And so, yeah, so that's a good couple of pages. So there's some more interesting narrative stuff. So yeah, they're really, this flashpoint, edition they really have gone for it a bit there's 23 23 pages of information on that so very good i like that so i look forward to uh, going through that more and seeing more of it in the future then we're on to forge worlds galactic war zones is an ongoing series of articles showing you how to build and paint your warhammer 40,000 armies based around the planets on which they live and fight Praise the Omnissiah, this month's articles is about Forge Worlds. So, goes through industrial wastelands. Armies that fight on Forge Worlds become covered in the dust and dirt of industry. Their war gear stained and weathered by the land. Here are a few tips on painting your Forge World conquering armies. Cool, okay, so now we're on to Echoes from the Warp. It's a regular column about the rules, tactics and ongoing development of Warhammer 40k. So, this, what this article talks about trial and error so you know i assume that's about the development of 40k games and that kind of thing as well okay now we're on to underworlds so glory points so a column all about warhammer underworlds created by game designer blah, blah, blah. so this delves in the development of the game rules tactics and gameplay so this is all about the, the arena mortis it's the ultimate warhammer underworlds multiplayer experience so that's to play with three or more players we think this is the way Simply pick any fighter, build their decks, and then begin your rampage. So that's interesting. Then we're on to the Beasts Within. In the depths of the Beast Grave, Morgwaith the Bloodied leads her daughters of Cain in an impossible quest. Yet the Living Mountain will always offer up sacrifices to those who will to those willing to fight in this short story by Phil Kelly. So that's a very short story and basically talks about an ongoing battle which ends up with the Oryx. Now the narrative for this leads on to Path to Victory. This is the fourth Path to Victory article. It is basically an in-depth tactical guide for these two warbands, Morgoth's Crushers and Morgwaith's Blade Coven. It's quite a long article. So yeah, that's cool. So quite a lot of tactical information there. Okay, then we're on to talking about photography, the scenes of battle. Gather it. Gareth Etherington has been blogging about Warhammer for over a decade, and in that time has taken many studying photographs of his miniatures, including the atmospheric scenes featured in this article. We ask him all about this interesting aspect of his hobby. So he is a good set builder for his photography, and some of this stuff looks incredible, actually. So he's got all details of his setup and that kind of stuff his background so i wonder if he generates the smoke himself or if that's some sort of effect that he adds on afterwards but yeah no no doubt about it stunning stuff okay now the big thing for me men of metal so the blackstone fortress new rules Techno archaeologist De Delosus is on a quest for knowledge, assisted by the Imperial robot UR025. He enters the fortress on his new quest to discover how the spindle drones that defend Blackstone Fortress work. 
the deadlier foes await him in the darkness. So it's got its own event table for this mission and it's got three combat stages and two challenge stages. And it does include the Guardian drones from the Ascension expansion. The Guardian drones used in this quest can be found in the Blackstone Fortress Ascension box set, an expansion for the main game. This set contains two of these deadly adversaries, plus all the associated cards and rules, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's good. So I look forward very much to playing this. Um, I'm a big fan of Blackstone Fortress. And I get the feeling that this might be the very last mission we get for it in White Dwarf. In fact, this mission was meant to come, I think, two issues ago, but it just never got worked in somehow. I think all part of probably a delay to Ascension because of COVID and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we've got it now and it looks pretty interesting. Okay, so now on to Middle Earth strategy battle game, The Paylock Cometh. Middle Earth, the Middle Earth team's rules writer, Jay Clare, is back this month to impart his wisdom on using another of Middle Earth's mightiest heroes in your games. But just who is he here to talk about this month? None other than the fearsome Azog the Defiler. So there's a few little bits that it goes through here. A little bit of lore, a bit about his generalship qualities, a little bit about the White Warg, which he rides, and some of the reinforcements that he can call on. Next up is Necromunda, the Dust Falls campaign. On the benighted world of Necromunda, far beneath the sprawling hive city of Hive Primus, lies the settlement known as Dust Falls. Here among the debris of Aeons, rival gangs battle for supremacy. We caught up with the campaign arbitrator to find out what it's all about. So we've got a few different houses that different people have put together and they explain, you know, and they explain how they've done that and that what they've got here. There's some great paint jobs here. So we've got House Kodor, the Underhive, Underhive Survivors, the Van Saar Gang, House Delacue Gang with an Amble. Oh, nice. And Ash from The Walking Dead there. It's amazing. So this one includes a couple of converted models, obviously, with Ash there. So that's good. And uh, then we've got Chaos Cult here. It's brilliant, brilliant stuff. Abhuman Warband. And then Venator's Gang. And it's got information on running your own campaign, so campaign advice. Right, then we're into Black Library. We've got Faith and Fury. The Pyrokeen Taurus Vaughan reveals the extent of the heresy on Neva to sisters Miria and Verity. But are they now too late to stop Lord Deacon Victor Lehan, Lehane from enacting his grand scheme? Does he truly want to create an army of psychers? So this is part seven of nine. And I won't read this yet because I haven't read the others, so I'll go back through that so I don't spoil it for myself. It's quite a, quite a healthy bit of story there. Thirteen pages there. Cool. Okay, then we've got outside the studios. We come to the end of the magazine. We look at the games people have been playing and the models they've been painting over the past month. This issue: Unquiet Spirits, A Blood Drinker, Big Guns, Little Games. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, some lovely artwork that people have sent in. OK, and then next month, what have we got? Tome Keepers. This is a really nice paint scheme on these. They've got mainly black, silver and red. So that's it. That is it for issue 457. A really great issue this month. So, again, the highlights for me really is I don't play much Necromunda, so I'm, this is really cool stuff, especially going through some of these conversions and that, and they look great. Um, now, Middle Earth, Middle Earth Strategy Battle. I've got a feeling that when the current Mortal Realms is done, we'll get a Middle Earth version of that. Because 40K has been done, and now Age of Sigmar has been done, I wonder if they'll try something else, maybe to improve their sales numbers on Middle Earth. Uh, I wonder if they'll push that as well. I really hope they do. So it wasn't until I read through this article 
that I did actually get a bit more excited about Middle Earth Strategy Battle. Um, it's nothing I've ever really considered, but some of these Oruk models look absolutely amazing. Um, and in fact, I might even just buy a few of these just so as I can paint them up because they do because they do look really really cool. But um, but yeah, so I like that in here. Of course, the Blackstone Fortress stuff I'm always going to love. Age of Sigmar stuff I'm less uh, sorry the the photography stuff I'm less inclined to read about that because um, it's not something I'm ever really going to consider. But you know. But there's no denying it, it does look amazing. Uh, Beast Grave. So again, I don't play any Beast Grave or Underworld stuff at all, really. Despite my gaming group trying to get me into it. So I do need to revisit it. But maybe if, if I do, I like the look of Morgox Crushers. So I'll have a good read through this tactics guide before maybe jumping in with those. I'm a huge fan of the Flashpoint stuff. If they start doing this and really stick to it, this will give us a really healthy amount of information to bite into each month. Um, so I am on the verge of setting up my crusade campaign with a friend of mine. Um, we're going to start small. We are, we're, we are going to use the Beyond the Veil mission pack to go through it. Um, the stuff like this, the real narrative stuff, I love it. I will eat this stuff up. So yeah, big fan of that. Golden Demon, I could take or leave it. This is really great if you've got a bunch of Trogoffs, but I won't be rushing out to buy any. But yeah, so a really solid issue for me. So I really enjoyed this issue. I did intend to cover the Silver Templars from issue number 457, but very stupidly when I was on holiday last month, I managed to leave my copy in the hotel. But I have ordered another copy off of eBay. If anyone what does want me to cover all of the Silver Templar stuff that's in there, let me know, because I'll happily do it. I intend to be going through it fully for my own army anyway. So if you want that, let me know, and I will, of course, provide it. But yeah, and let me know if you want me to cover this each month. I covered this because I really enjoyed the content. Um, but if this is something that people want on a monthly basis, let me know in the comments, and I will absolutely do it. So thanks very much for watching. Much appreciated. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe, and I'll see you later.